I was very hesitant going into Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I absolutely adore Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and I was just worried that due to me believing that Odyssey is one of the top three games of this generation, that Valhalla simply wouldn't live up to the hype. And after about 25 to 30 hours with the game, I've got some thoughts. Let's begin with what is essentially the same as the previous two Assassin's Creed titles, the combat. The combat of Valhalla leans once again heavily into the action RPG genre, the same as the previous two games. It's R1 and RB for light hits, R2 and RT for heavy hits, and then holding down right trigger and pressing any combination of square, triangle, circle and X gives you unique abilities that either can use. Then there's a slew of in-depth combat mechanics that are just best played to be understood. How you load out your character in Valhalla can seriously change the combat. Personally, I went with a shield and axe combo, allowing me to parry my way through the game and defeat the majority of my enemies with big flashy finishes, including decapitations and smashing them in the face with clubs. There are a bunch of new weapons, including the flail, in Valhalla, but I'm going to leave this up to you to find them and just see how each of them play out. Leveling up in Valhalla is done via the skill tree, and the skill tree is quite interesting and just bloody large as well, offering huge variations of stats with branching paths that lead to even more unique stats and abilities such as chain assassinations or heavy guard assassinations. It makes it totally worthwhile to look at these branches that you may have previously ignored. Every time you upgrade Ava and it gives you a new power level, which allows you to take down and hunt the game's hardest foes. If you do accidentally go down a path of skills and stats that you couldn't care less about, Valhalla does allow you to remap your skills at any time. So just go wild and check everything out. Worst case scenario is you get some skills you don't really care about, but your power level will still skyrocket quickly. Unique abilities, as I said, are mapped to the RT and R2 buttons with the face buttons, and these are done by finding books of knowledge throughout the world. You can get these with simple exploration of the game's world or just going on one of the game's various raids, which is the big new mechanic in Valhalla. Before I say anything else, I just have to say, raiding is a lot of fun. Storming encampments with a group of Vikings is just the best way to play Assassin's Creed Valhalla. In fact, it's the only way given that Ivor cannot open a gold chest or storm a heavy door by himself. It's not really a problem in the slightest, but this does lose the Assassin's part of Assassin's Creed somewhat by being forced to basically go loud at all times. But you know what? I loved it. The map, or should I say maps in Valhalla, are just huge. I am, as I say, I'm around the 25 hour mark of the game so far, and yet to explore the majority of either Norway or England. First, I did have a minor gripe and wasn't sure how I felt about these maps, as there is a lot of looting and things to do, as it's just standard for Ubisoft titles. But it's almost hidden by this colour coded dots, as opposed to just straight up telling me what I'm heading towards. Again, though, this is a minor gripe that eventually flourished into a love, because of the new way of showing me the map did its job admirably and forced me to explore and discover things far more organically than I would have done in previous games. Speaking of the maps and the world in general, Norway and England are both stunning. My PS4 has been in a constant state of hyper fan mode though, but this has made me really excited to see how this runs on the PlayStation 5. The amount of times where I would just climb up a building or a mountain just to stand and look over the world. So far, the story reminds me of The Last Kingdom and Vikings, right down to including a legend of the now dead Ragnar Lothbrok and his very much still alive sons. The story is phenomenal though, easily matching or surpassing the quality of the aforementioned award-winning TV shows. The best beasts, I think you'll find. You enjoy yourself? I won't talk about the story past getting to England, however. In Norway, you play through a classic power struggle, allied with your brother from another mother, 
against his father, who is relinquishing his king status in order to unite all of Norway under one king. You and your boys don't like this, though, so you piss off to England in order to become England's landlord, as the trailer says. Obviously, one thing that every good story needs is a good leading person, and I absolutely love Ava. I've changed between their gender at will quite a few times at this point. It's just really, really happy to um, play through the story as a male or female from different perspectives. One thing to note about the worlds, Norway and England are both islands, so you will do a lot of exploring from the helm of your long longship. Luckily for us, Vikings are beefy as all hell, and the countries are both windy as, as fuck. So I can safely say that thanks to this, the longboat is the quickest ship that I have ever sailed on, zipping its way up and down the countries quicker than I could drive from Hackney to Buckingham Palace on Watch Dogs Legion. This just really works in Valhalla's favour, as I haven't once gotten the open world fatigue, the feeling of the maps that are too large. The settlement building that has been added for Valhalla allows one to upgrade Ava and Sigurd's raiding camp. Sigurd being your brother from another mother. By investing in new buildings such as barracks, a fishing hut, or a seer's tent, Ava and the gang gain a wealth of new abilities and quests that change the tides of battle in different ways. For example, by building a barracks, Ava can recruit a Yom's Viking, who works as your second in command on your longboat and follows you into every raid you go on but with much higher stats and customizable armor than the usual Viking on the roster. The future stuff is still there, but contrary to most, I actually like Layla's story, so seeing it a bit more fleshed out has been nice. She is just so much better than Desmond. The apocalypse almost being on us is actually interesting as well. Also, Sean's back, but so is William, who I ranked on my list as joint worst assassin with Desmond. I have absolutely loved my time with Valhalla. I want to do every raid, explore every piece of world building side quests, and just jump from every mountain. It is with absolute certainty that I am happy to rank Valhalla as one of the best games on the PlayStation 4, giving it a 9 out of 10. Now leave me alone, I want to go and play more. I hope you liked my review guys. I'm sorry about some of the audio, but it's a bit choppy. Um, if you did like it, give us some feedback down below. Give us a like um, and make sure you subscribe. Don't forget to check us out at respawning.co.uk and check through our Twitter as well at respawning.uk. Thanks for watching.